A U.S. airman suspected Pentagon leaker was warned multiple times, P-R-E-S-E-C-U-T-O-R-S say. U.S. authorities said in a court document that Jack Teixeira should be kept in custody due to his willful disregard for information security. Despite receiving two different warnings from his supervisors last year, he is accused of leaking documents. The 21-year-old has been in custody since the FBI arrested him on the 14th of April. Several secret data suddenly started to surface in the Internet chatroom Discord, and he was charged with the unauthorized transmission and retention of defense materials. They contained private material relating to U.S. allies and the Ukrainian conflict. In a court document submitted on Wednesday, Justice Department prosecutors said that Mr. Teixeira's supervisors had raised concerning actions over his handling of sensitive material. There was a claim that he had once been observed taking notes and putting them in his pocket. Prosecutors claim that after that, his superiors ordered him to stop writing down any secret material. After attending a secret briefing and asking very specific questions about what was covered, Mr. Teixeira's superiors found out he was potentially ignoring a cease and desist order on deep diving into intelligence a month later. The court document stated that they instructed him to cease and focus on his job. The superiors of Mr. Teixeira were then alerted in February 2023 when it was observed that the airman was accessing intelligence data not related to his primary duty. It is unknown if he received punishment. The prosecution claims that Mr. Teixeira should not be granted bail because he constitutes a threat to national security, but the defense contends that he should be granted bail with conditions. Fire smoke from Canada is flooding the U.S. and might remain there for days. According to health and weather authorities, smoke from wildfires in Canada is making its way into some areas of the central U.S. and might remain there for days. As of early Saturday, air quality advisories had been posted in several states, including Nebraska, Washington, Montana, and Wisconsin, with a specific weather statement on Wyoming's air quality. Later in the day, the most intense smoke concentrations should move farther east toward the Midwest, hitting significant metro centers including Chicago, Indianapolis, and St. Louis. The fire season has gotten off to an exceptionally aggressive start in Canada. Devastating wildfires in Alberta last week have already consumed more land there than in the province's previous five years combined at this stage in the year. Canadian wildfire smoke is expected to spread over Nebraska from this afternoon through tomorrow morning potentially causing hazardous air quality and reduced visibility in eastern Nebraska and Iowa. If you can, avoid going outside when the air quality is bad. The National Weather Service in Omaha tweeted on Friday that wildfire smoke was starting to spread into the Lincoln and Omaha urban regions. The health agency issued a Saturday warning for smoke in Omaha's home county of Douglas in eastern Nebraska. Early on Friday, According to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency's Air Quality Index, the air quality was very unhealthy across sections of the Rockies, the Great Plains, and the Midwest, including the Nebraska Panhandle and northeastern region of the state. U.S. Debt Ceiling Kevin McCarthy and Joe Biden Try to End the Deadlock President Joe Biden and leading Republican Kevin McCarthy have had a phone conversation signaling a shift in the impasse on raising the U.S. debt ceiling. As he returned to the White House from the G7 conference in Japan, Mr. Biden told reporters that the call went well and that he and Mr. Obama would speak again on Monday. The Republican demand for budget cutbacks as a prerequisite for lifting the ceiling continues to be a point of contention between the two parties. If this isn't done by June, the U.S. may default on its debt. The federal government could not take out new loans or cover all its obligations in such a case. On June 1st, a default might start, according to the Treasury Department's warning. Such a result would destabilize the financial system and result in additional increases in interest rates. The Republican-controlled House of Representatives ideas, Mr. Biden told reporters as he departed Japan on Sunday, were, simply, quite frankly, unacceptable. 
Republicans need to accept that there can be no bipartisan agreement reached solely on their partisan terms, he continued. They also need to relocate. But Mr. Biden also stated that he would be prepared to decrease expenditure to reach an agreement. Negotiators gathered on Capitol Hill on Sunday night for a conference that lasted around two and a half hours. The president's top advisor and one of Vice President Biden's representatives, Steve Ricchetti, assured reporters that the negotiation teams will continue to work into the night. The deadlock has shaken the financial markets. The S&P 500 fell 0.1%, the Nasdaq down 0.2%, and the Dow finished the day down 0.3%. Republicans are asking for $4.5 trillion, 3.61 trillion pounds, in budget cutbacks, including killing out several Mr. Biden's legislative initiatives, in exchange for support for extending the debt ceiling. They are also asking for more money to be spent on the military and border security. The Republican plan has been dubbed, a blueprint to destroy hard-working American families, by the White House, even though it has hinted that it may make some financial adjustments. The left and right sectors of their respective parties are putting pressure on President Biden and Mr. McCarthy to stay the line. An agreement has so far been difficult to reach with Republicans holding a slim majority in the House and a one-seat Democratic majority in the Senate. U.S. debt ceiling discussions were deemed successful, but there is still no agreement. Republican leader Kevin McCarthy and U.S. President Joe Biden described their most recent debt ceiling discussions as promising, although no agreement has yet been achieved. Speaker of the House McCarthy told reporters, I think we can get an agreement. Even while he acknowledged there were differences, Mr. Biden stated that, default is off the table. The U.S. may default on its debt as early as June 1, according to Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen. By June, if it hasn't been increased over the present maximum of around $31.4 trillion, 25.2 trillion pounds, the U.S. may default on its debt. If so, the government could not take out any further loans or cover all its obligations. The worldwide economy would also be in danger of suffering, which would have an impact on international pricing and mortgage rates. After meeting with the House Speaker, Mr. Biden released a statement in which he declared, default is off the table, and the only way to move forward is in good faith toward a bipartisan agreement. We don't have an agreement yet, Mr. McCarthy stated. But I did think that the conversation was fruitful in areas where we disagreed. He promised to speak with Biden every day until the matter was resolved. According to Mr. McCarthy, spending is at the root of the impasse between Democrats and Republicans. The House Speaker had earlier emphasized the necessity for a compromise this week to give Congress enough time to fulfill the deadline of June 1. He calculated that it would take around 72 hours to write, read, and vote on the agreement. In a letter to Congress on Monday, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen warned that without a rise in the debt ceiling, the U.S. will likely run out of money to pay its obligations as early as the 1st of June. She emphasized the urgency and said it was highly likely that there would be a default in early June. According to her comments, American families would suffer greatly if Congress didn't raise the debt ceiling. Republicans are calling for budget cutbacks of more than $4 trillion, which would eliminate several of Vice President Biden's legislative ambitions.
Democrats offered to maintain flat expenditures but were rejected. The left and right edges of their respective parties are putting pressure on Mr. Biden and Mr. McCarthy to stay the line. An agreement has so far been difficult to reach with Republicans holding a slim majority in the House and a one-seat Democratic majority in the Senate. State House Speaker Dade Phelan is asked to retire by Texas Attorney General Paxton due to his apparent intoxication. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton demanded the resignation of Texas House Speaker Dade Phelan on Tuesday after a video of Phelan slurring his words and having trouble standing went viral on social media. Many speculated that Phelan may have been drunk in the video. As a result of Phelan's apparent debilitating intoxication on the Texas Capitol's House floor, Paxton demanded his resignation in a statement. In the statement, the Attorney General said the Speaker's conduct negatively impacted the legislative process and constitutes a failure to live up to his duty to the public. In addition, Paxton said, Texans were relying on the House to pass critical conservative priorities including protecting the integrity of our elections and preventing Chinese spies from controlling Texas land. Paxton added that Phelan's failures as speaker have created a credibility crisis for all Republican candidates for our entire party. Paxton ended the statement by saying, I hope Speaker Phelan will get the help he needs, and that he has proven himself unworthy of Texans' trust and incapable of leading the Texas House. Paxton also sent a referral to Rep. Andrew Murr, the head of the Texas House's General Investigating and Ethics Committee, requesting an investigation into any violations of House rules, state law, and for conduct unbecoming his position. The Speaker Phelan's office responded to the charges in other publications even though it did not immediately reply to Fox News Digital's request for comment. Brad Johnson, a news writer for The Texan, claims that this is in response to the House Ethics Panel starting an inquiry. Paxton's statement was described by Phelan spokesman Kate Whitman as a last-ditch effort to save face. Chris Ray will be fired, according to DeSantis. WHO also claims that the FBI and DOJ have lost their way. The Justice Department and the FBI, according to newly announced Republican presidential contender Ron DeSantis, have lost their way and allowed themselves to be weaponized against Americans. DeSantis promised to fire Ray on Wednesday. DeSantis, the second-term governor of Florida and a former member of the U.S. House stated in his first interview after formally entering the 2024 race that he would change the DOJ's top brass in response to the ongoing bombshell reports of politicization that Congress and a few media outlets have brought to light. No, I would not keep Chris Ray as director of the FBI. There'll be a new one on day one, said DeSantis. As the FBI is still being charged with politicking, Ray, a Trump appointment who formerly represented former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie during his George Washington Bridgegate controversy, has come under heavy fire. The FBI has received criticism for its purported threat tagging of school board meeting attendees, as well as raids on people like pro-life activists and longtime Republican consultant Roger Stone. Most recently, three FBI employees testified before Congress that they were targeted because they questioned the January 6th narrative. 
DeSantis stated that his choice for attorney general must have a strong backbone and the ability to carry out his duties in the face of criticism from left-wing media outlets like The Washington Post and The New York Times. And I think the DOJ and FBI have lost their way. I think that they've been weaponized against Americans who think like me and you. And I think that they become very partisan. DeSantis asserted that the FBI and other agencies' partisanship was enabled by Republican presidents' continued belief that they were independent, while, in reality, they were executive branch organizations. They answer to the elected president of the United States. So as president, you have a responsibility to be involved in holding those agencies accountable, clearing out people who are not doing the job, and making sure that they're doing the people's business, and they're not abusing their authority," he said. DeSantis promised that any Justice Department officials discovered to be collude ing with a tech official to block material will be swiftly dismissed, appearing to allude to the Twitter files incident. And because it's a war on truth, I think we have no choice but to wage a war on woke. A president should therefore be unafraid to speak truth to power, even if it is socially uncomfortable in some precincts, as presenting empirical facts against woke attestations can be, DeSantis argued. UFO, seen hovering above the largest marine installation in the United States. We have aliens. In 2021, witnesses in California saw what they believed to be a UFO with flashing lights flying above a U.S. Marine installation, but the government insists it was only a training exercise. Fox News Digital received video and images of the potential UFO from Jeremy Corbell, the lone citizen mentioned at the historic hearing on unexplained atypical phenomena UAPs, held by Congress in May 2022. Investigative journalist and videomaker Corbell said that witnesses at Camp Wilson in 29 Palms, California, described it to him as a large, silent, hovering triangular-shaped craft. The Pentagon's unit that oversees UAPs, a government-derived threat, was conducting a training session at the time, according to Sue Goff, a Department of Defense spokesman, who talked to Fox News Digital. I can confirm that there were military aviation assets in the 29 Palms, California, airspace and a weapons and tactics instructor course was being conducted at the time," Goff wrote in an email. There is no record of communication with the base range control concerning a UAP sighting, nor of the allocation of any base resources to investigate a UAP sighting. AARO does not have a record of this alleged event and cannot verify the authenticity of the report. The biggest Marine Corps post in the world, Camp Wilson, located at the southernmost point of San Bernardino County in the Mojave Desert and covering 998 square miles, saw the event. Training will take up the majority of the base. An institution under the Department of Defense called AARO, which stands for All Domain Anomaly Resolution Institution, has been entrusted with looking into and identifying unexplained flying objects and other occurrences in the air, sea, or space. 
Voices may be heard questioning what the object is in films that Corbell and his weaponizedpodcast.com co-host, journalist George Knapp, published. There is a second voice saying, we got aliens. Those are not alum rounds because alum rounds fall. And, and nobody shoots in a five gun section. No, you can see like an outline of something. It's moving. Take what you got? To your leader. Oh, hell no. Yo, we got aliens out here, dog. <laughs> My phone camera says. Yo, this is <laughs> We got UFOs outside. Yo, hey, we're all dead. Everyone's out here. Goff claims that even though AARO doesn't have a record of this encounter, it serves as evidence of what Corbell and lawmakers have called a flagrant failure to disclose possible UFO sightings. Sens. Mark Warner, D. Virginia, and Marco Rubio, R. Florida, sent a five-point letter to the Department of Defense following the April 19 UFO hearing before the Senate Armed Services Subcommittee on Emerging Threats and Capabilities. In a message sent through email, Rubio said that Americans are understandably concerned about objects in the nation's sky and close to infrastructure. What's worse, our government spent too many years ignoring or downplaying the threat, Rubio said. Thankfully, that is beginning to change, but as we saw earlier this year, the defense and intelligence communities are still struggling. The Chinese spy balloon and three other unmanned aerial vehicles UAVs, that the Biden administration shot down in February were mentioned by the Florida senator. As they look into tips, pictures, and videos, Corbell and Knapp are still effectively acting as the witnesses' mouthpieces for the time being. He described this specific instance as an open UFO investigation and stated that they are using the public to get more witnesses and film. We encourage additional service members that were at the 29 Palms Camp Wilson installation during this reported event to come forward with additional footage, images or information, Corbell said. The truth is out there, but without a proper and defined flow of information by the Department of Defense, we will not be able to make progress on understanding the UFO presence on planet Earth and what it means for humanity. crisis averted? What's in the debt ceiling agreement that Biden and McCarthy reached to prevent default? To prepare the debt ceiling bill for Wednesday's floor discussion, the House Rules Committee will convene on Tuesday in the afternoon. Just days before a June 5 deadline, President Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy achieved an eagerly expected budget agreement preventing a potentially disastrous U.S. default. Both parties are anticipated to highlight certain benefits of the legislation. According to President Biden, the package represents a compromise, which means no one got everything they wanted. The 99-page deal's language was made public by the House on Sunday night. In addition to providing for a two-year debt limit hike, the deal would maintain non-defense expenditure at about the same level in the 2024 fiscal year and boost it by 1% the following year. To Biden's proposed budget strategy for 2024, the agreement will completely cover veterans' medical care, including a fund specifically for soldiers who have been exposed to dangerous chemicals or environmental risks. In his budget, Biden requested $20.3 billion for the Hazardous Exposure Fund, and Republican negotiators ensured Sunday that funding was preserved. The House will vote on the plan on Wednesday, according to McCarthy, a Republican from California, allowing the Senate time to examine it before June 5.
when Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen warned that the United States may default on its debt commitments if Congress did not move quickly enough. The debt ceiling bill will be prepared for floor discussion on Wednesday by the House Rules Committee, which will convene on Tuesday at 3 p.m. Furious rage as convention changes to an 18-plus policy in response to DeSantis' law, heartbreaking. Florida's forthcoming, furry, convention will only allow adults over the age of 18 to attend in reaction to Republican Governor Ron DeSantis' ban on kids attending adult live entertainment. Megaplex an event in Orlando for people who enjoy dressing up as or making art of anthropomorphized creatures, first stated their choice on Wednesday. The Protection of Children Act, SB 1438, specifically prohibits a person from knowingly admitting a child to an adult live performance. An adult live performance is defined as any show, exhibition, or other presentation in front of a live audience which, in whole or in part, depicts or simulates nudity, sexual conduct, sexual excitement, or specific sexual activities. Florida Governor and GOP presidential nominee Ron DeSantis has successfully sucked the pleasure out of many of life's little joys, from drag brunches to Disney adult TikTok. And thanks to the passage of SB 1438, or the Protection of Children Act, DeSantis may now be bringing the axe down on furries, senior writer E.J. Dixon wrote. Although the furry group believed that their conference may have broken a statute intended to stop the sexualization of youngsters, Dixon rejected the association as a result of pervasive misconceptions that furries are inherently sexual. The Rolling Stone then quoted, a transgender furry and the owner of furry adult toy company Lycantasy, who agreed with Megaplex's response to the law but won't go to this year's convention because, I don't want to end up in a confrontation, or worse, jail or dead, for just going to the bathroom in Florida. Dixon persisted in asserting that the furry fandom is a safe place for kids because it attracts people who are marginalized. Dixon continued, the rise of furry influencers on platforms like TikTok has led to the fandom becoming increasingly popular among young people, with the Pittsburgh-based conference Anthrocon reporting that 16% of its attendees in 2019 were under the age of 19. In an interview with the Moms of Furries founders, Dixon quoted one of them as saying it was heartbreaking to think of young furries not having a space to connect because of the convention's new age requirement. Despite the age restriction this year, Megaplex was confident that things would change in 2024. It is our hope that this change is temporary and that we can welcome members of all ages back next year," Megaplex's statement read. This decision has been a difficult one, but Megaplex has not forgotten about or abandoned our younger fandom members and is looking into options for events and activities to include all age ranges and their families. The online 2022 Megaplex calendar shows that a lot of the activities labeled for those 18 and older were at night. Other afternoon events included How to Be Queer, Babafur, Kidfur Meet Up, and Transgender Furs Meet and Greet. These were all designated for adults or a wide audience. The Hyatt Regency in Orlando is scheduled to host the convention from September 15 to 17. 
McCarthy-Biden debt ceiling agreement clears a significant procedural barrier in the House. President Joe Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, R. Califf, reached a debt ceiling agreement that passed a crucial test on Tuesday night, clearing the way for a House vote on the pact on Wednesday night. The implementation of that agreement was authorized by the House Rules Committee in a 7-6 vote on Tuesday night. A favorable vote wasn't certain because three of the committee's Republican members had expressed disapproval or potential resistance to the deal. The law securing the Biden-McCarthy agreement could not have been discussed on the House floor because Republicans control the Rules Committee with a 9-4 lead. If three Republicans and every Democrat had opposed it, the measure would not have passed. However, all four Democrats and all but two Republicans, Reps. Ralph Norman of South Carolina and Chip Roy of Texas, voted against it in the committee's final vote. It was able to pass as a result, setting up votes on the House floor for this Wednesday. The two parties used the hearing to point the finger at one another for rushing to extend the government's borrowing ceiling only days before it is anticipated to run out of money, even though the measure is set to pass in a bipartisan vote. Republicans' original debt limit measure, the Limit, Save, Grow Act, drew criticism from Democrats for seeking to default on America and for the stricter labor requirements McCarthy's team secured for recipients of federal help. Republicans divided on whether the plan does enough to rein in spending applauded it and supported McCarthy's efforts to obtain modest budget reductions. This bill is smoke and mirrors, said Norman. I get why the Democrats are voting for it because they get pretty much what they want. Jason Smith, the Republican chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, of Missouri disputed Norman's claim throughout the hearing. This bill is clearly not everything that I want by any means, I want it a lot more. But it's definitely better than the blank check debt limit that the president was pushing, Smith said. Roy referred to the estimated $2 trillion in savings from the plan as a fiction and offered a calculation that indicated the law would increase the national debt by $4 trillion. The final deal agreed over the weekend suspends the debt ceiling without a restriction until January 1, 2025, while also reducing non-defense expenditure to levels similar to fiscal 2022, restricting growth at 1% for the next two years. Additionally, it recovers some cash intended for the Internal Revenue Service and certain COVID-19 pandemic funds that were not yet spent. Legislators from both parties have put out at least 50 changes, but the Rules Committee rejected each one to maintain the terms of the agreement reached between House GOP leaders and the White House. Democrats urge that the U.S. halt oil extraction OR risk, severe weather events. Before Monday's vote on the debt ceiling deal, Rep. Jamal Bowman, a Democrat from New York, campaigned for a stop to fossil fuel exploration. Bowman talked about the recent deal between President Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, a Republican from California, to extend the debt ceiling while also making some expenditure reductions to prevent default. Despite the two parties declaring a settlement, several liberal Republicans and Democrats in the House Freedom Caucus have expressed opposition to the legislation. One of the members who had reservations about the agreement, Bowman claimed that a Joe Manchin pipeline 
that Democrats had previously rejected because of worries about climate change was a major problem in the measure. And what's problematic about that is number one, we need to stop drilling for fossil fuels completely, but number two, we need an expedited way to get us to clean renewable energy, or we will continue to have these severe weather events that we have been having for quite some time because of the warming of the planet," Bowman said. The Mountain Valley Pipeline a natural gas pipeline that would connect Manchin's home state of West Virginia with Southern Virginia, was referred to as the Joe Manchin Pipeline. Manchin commended the fact that money for the project was included in the debt ceiling. Bowman said during the interview that he was still undecided over the debt ceiling agreement since his staff was still reviewing the bill. The House of Representatives is scheduled to vote on the bill on Wednesday. Similar to his fellow progressive House members, Bowman has been a vocal advocate of legislation addressing climate change. He proposed a $1.4 trillion Green New Deal for public schools in 2021 to fund the renovation of educational facilities with environmentally friendly infrastructure. It's time for a revolution in public education, Bowman said. As we deal with a devastating climate crisis caused by decades of unchecked corporate greed, we need to center our children and their future. Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, DNY, a fellow squad member, called for a halt to fossil fuel exploration in 2018 after championing her own Green New Deal in the House. Before the financial crisis, the House approves the McCarthy-Biden debt ceiling agreement and sends it to the Senate. Congress is on track to approve additional borrowing only days before the government is anticipated to run out of money after the House enacted legislation late on Wednesday to execute the debt ceiling accord struck between President Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. Majorities in both parties supported the compromise which also satisfies the GOP demand to reduce non-defense discretionary spending over the next two years, and the package passed by a vote of 314 to 117. Democrats backed the bill 165 to 46, while Republicans supported it by a vote of 149 to 71. Democrats claimed responsibility for their role in advancing the measure. 52 Democrats joined with Republicans in an unusual procedural vote earlier in the day to keep the measure alive. The bill is objectionable, according to former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, but it also will avert an unprecedented default, which would cause devastation to America's families, she said. Even though the package fell short of conservatives' original goal of cutting expenditure by around $150 billion from this year to the next, McCarthy, a Republican from California, praised the plan's spending reductions. Tonight we're going to do something we haven't done before, McCarthy said. Tonight, we are going to vote for the largest savings in American history, over $2.1 trillion. That's what we're voting for. Every great nation that has overextended itself has collapsed. With the support of the House, the bill is now headed to the Senate, where Majority Leader Chuck Schumer earlier in the day vowed it would be debated, as soon as possible. Barring any objections from senators to moving rapidly, that vote is anticipated to happen this week. Asked about the viability of a Senate vote by Friday, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell told reporters, I can tell you what I hope happens. That we can finish this Thursday or Friday and soothe the country and soothe the markets.
The final deal agreed over the weekend suspends the debt ceiling without a restriction until January 1, 2025, while also reducing non-defense expenditure to levels similar to fiscal 2022, restricting growth at 1% for the next two years. And proposing optional ceilings for the following four years. Additionally, it recovers some cash intended for the Internal Revenue Service and certain COVID-19 pandemic funds that were not yet spent. But shortly after the agreement was reached on Saturday night, several conservative Republicans voiced their opposition to it. Person alleging Biden criminal bribery scheme is a highly credible FBI source used since Obama admin. The person who provided the information that then Vice President Joe Biden was involved in a criminal bribery scheme with a foreign national is a highly credible FBI confidential human source who has assisted the Bureau in numerous investigations going back to the Obama administration. James Comer, the head of the House Oversight Committee, and Sen Chuck Grassley, a Republican, were approached by a whistleblower who claimed that the FBI had a form known as an FD-1023, dated June 30, 2020. That detailed information from a confidential human source that claimed Joe Biden, while vice president, was involved in a $5 million criminal bribery scheme with a foreign national in exchange for influence over policy decisions. According to a source with direct knowledge, the anonymous person who gave the FBI the information on Biden was a pre-existing FBI source who had previously been employed in other investigations unrelated to the Biden material. According to the source, the FBI employed the secret human source for at least several years before the creation of the FD-1023 document outlining Biden's claims in June 2020. The confidential human source has also been consistently reviewed by the FBI and has been found to be highly credible, the source added. According to the source, the person took part in investigations under the Obama administration. The FBI refused to provide up the FD-1023 memo after Comer, a Republican from Kentucky, demanded it last month, claiming it was seeking to preserve its sources and procedures. In the event that the FBI did not provide the committee with the actual document, Comer threatened to charge Christopher Wray, the director, in contempt of Congress. The whistleblower claims that the information on the FD-1023 form provides a precise description of how the alleged criminal scheme was employed as well as its purpose, and describes a plan in which money was exchanged for making policy choices. The FBI agreed to bring the actual document to Capitol Hill on Monday for legislators to study in a secure SCIF after first offering to let Comer and Grassley review it at FBI headquarters. On Monday, the FBI is anticipated to inform the legislators in the same location on the Biden paper and claims. The White House has insisted that President Biden has no business ties abroad and that he has never discussed them with his son, Hunter Biden. Due to his tax affairs connected to shady international transactions, Hunter Biden has been the subject of a federal investigation since 2018. The president, according to Biden administration officials, has never brought up family member investigations with the Justice Department. Military aircraft pursuing an unresponsive plane makes an explosion sound in the Washington, D.C. area. NORAD The Washington, D.C. metroplex area, as well as regions as far east as the eastern shore of Maryland and as far west as Manassas, Virginia, 
all experienced a tremendous explosion sound caused by two military planes attempting to catch up to a Cessna with an unresponsive pilot. According to the Office of Emergency Management for Annapolis, the Sunday boom was brought on by a permitted DOD flight. The loud boom that was heard across the DMV area was caused by an authorized DOD flight, the office said. This flight caused a sonic boom. That is all the information available at this time. Officials in Bowie, Maryland, verified that a jet departing from Joint Base Andrews was the source of the sonic boom reported there. The Cessna was intercepted above Washington, D.C., and Northern Virginia by two F-16 planes from an Air National Guard facility in Atlantic City, New Jersey, and two from the D.C. National Guard at Andrews Air Force Facility, according to the Continental U.S. North American Aerospace Defense Command, NORAD. The two F-16 aircraft from Andrews were the source of the sonic boom since they were permitted to fly at supersonic speeds to catch up with the airliner. At 3.20 p.m., a civilian jet was intercepted, and fighter pilots reported that the Cessna's pilot was not responding. Before the Cessna's crash in Virginia in the George Washington National Forest, NORAD stated that they had been attempting to contact the pilot. People on the ground may have witnessed flares being deployed to try to intercept the jet, according to NORAD. According to NORAD, the flares burn off fast and completely, posing little threat to anyone on the ground. A Cessna citation that took off from Elizabethton, Tennessee, headed for Islip, New York, but crashed in the thinly populated hamlet of Montebello, Virginia, at about 3 in the afternoon according to the Federal Aviation Administration. On board were four passengers. When the plane breached the no-fly zone in the vicinity of the Capitol on Sunday, officials were tracking it, according to congressional sources who spoke to Aircon at the time. The capital was reportedly in an elevated position for a short period until officials decided the jet that had entered restricted airspace was not a threat. Officials even claimed that the capital was never under threat. President Biden was informed about the event, according to a White House official, who also noted that Andrews could hardly hear the sonic boom. Democrats respond to the indictment of Trump by saying, the chaos continues. Following the announcement that former President Donald Trump had been charged on charges related to his handling of secret data, Democrat legislators reacted quickly, with some claiming that the former leader is not above the law and describing his actions as extremist and toxic. No one is above the law, Rep. Jerry Connolly, DVA, said in a Twitter post. The chaos of Trump continues, Rep. Greg Landsman, D. Ohio, said on Twitter. What he's doing to this country, the extremism and danger he and his allies present, has to end. Only when those who support and enable him decide to be done with this toxic behavior, will this all be behind us. Democrats hailed the charge as an affirmation of the rule of law, while numerous Republican senators accused the Justice Department of seeking to meddle in the forthcoming 2024 presidential race. Trump's apparent indictment on multiple charges arising from his retention of classified materials is another affirmation of the rule of law, Rep. Adam Schiff, DCA, wrote in a Twitter post. For four years, he acted like he was above the law. But he should be treated like any other lawbreaker. And today, he has been. Grand jury votes to indict Trump. 
tweeted Representative Ilhan Omar, D. Min, cheering the decision. It's time that we ensure Trump is banned from running for any public office again, echoed Representative Jamal Bowman, DNY, in a press release. The indictment, according to Representative Jimmy Gomez, D. Califf, is one of many steps toward removing Trump as a danger to free and fair elections. I will always believe that this twice impeached former president is a threat to our democracy, he tweeted. Other lawmakers responded in a more subdued manner, saying that Trump is innocent until proven guilty, and everyone is innocent until proven guilty, Representative Dean Phillips, DMN, said in a Twitter post. But we don't need a judge or jury to determine if his destruction of decency and dangerous incompetence continues to stain America. Trump has been charged twice already this year. After being captured by Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg with 34 felonies of first-degree business record falsification, Trump entered a not guilty plea in April. Trump has been ordered to appear in federal court in Miami on Tuesday, June 13. Tennessee residents beg city for help dealing with homeless squatters. Something needs to be done. Squatters and homeless encampments are still wreaking havoc in a Middle Tennessee community, and the residents are loudly asking that the city take action. The trash they're leaving for property owners, the waste that they're leaving around everywhere, Brittany McCann, a resident of Hermitage, Tennessee, just outside Nashville, told about squatters in makeshift homes and RVs in parking lots and streets. Something needs to be done. One squatter, according to McCann, set up a tent with his dog in a parking lot in her neighborhood causing her to notify the local officials, who then ordered him to leave the area. But he immediately established a second camp close by. The individual, according to McCann, has repeatedly been ejected from residences only to reappear nearby. To track someone down every single time to tell them repeatedly the same thing is ridiculous, McCann said. If you're homeless, you deserve better. We are going to offer you the support that you need and if you don't take it, you need to find some place that will support your lifestyle. He's got a ton of furniture and building materials, McCann said. He's built a house and it looks like he has a trailer with electricity and air conditioning and a generator. That could be a meth lab. That could be a puppy mill. That could be used for a bombing just like downtown. We don't know what's going on in there. Somebody has got to get down here and check this out. I can't believe this is happening right now in Hermitage. Well, now I can. Five years ago I couldn't. In general, I can tell you that if someone experiencing homelessness needs help, whether we first encounter them or they are referred to us, we always offer our support and make every effort to connect them to wraparound services and enroll them in coordinated entry, our housing pipeline," said the Nashville Metro Homeless Impact Division. We always partner with a couple of agencies who help care for and provide services for pets of our unhoused neighbors. Like many of us, our pets are our family and need love, attention and care also. The Meth Island, built by squatters in Florida was destroyed by police. Authorities in Florida have started tearing down buildings on an island that was taken over by squatters and is notorious for its drug usage. There was a huge safety concern for us about whoever would be on that island with those types of structures out there," said Port Orange Police Det. Mike Wallace.
According to a recent video shared by the Volusia County Sheriff's Office, the region, which social media users have called, Meth Island, is littered with numerous hand-built wooden buildings, including a complex four-story treehouse and other huts created out of what appears to be old timber and tree branches. On the island, which is close to the Dunlawton Bridge in Port Orange, the squatters also put in a trampoline and looked to be building a pool. To deter visitors, some of the squatters even rigged surrounding islets with booby traps, which the authorities claim they will remove in the future. There is evidence of drugs that have been done over there, alcohol that's been done, said Kevin Padry, a South Daytona police lieutenant. The Port Orange Police Department, South Daytona Police Department, and Florida Fish and Wildlife were helped last week by the Volusia County Sheriff's Office, which put up no trespassing signs at the squatter camp. Trespass notice you are ordered to vacate the island within 48 hours, signs posted by Florida law enforcement on the island state. According to police officials, they did this because the squatter activities and improvised structures provide a risk to both the occupants and nearby communities during hurricane season. All that stuff is going to get thrown all over the intracoastal and damage other boats, or who knows how far some of the wood can launch and possibly damage other property as well, Pedri told. The constructions, which the police suspect are built of wood that was probably stolen from docks or scavenged, also pose a threat to the island's mangrove population, which is vital to the island's ability to withstand storm surges. The trampoline and complex treehouse that is present in the area, according to the police, may tempt children to play there. All it does is draw attention for young kids to go over there, Pedri said. They go to these islands and start having fun, and then you start getting the alcohol in there, and they are jumping down on these trampolines. That's when an accident is going to wind up happening. To clean the island and put it back to its natural form, according to Pedri, the local public works department has already started demolishing some of the buildings. According to a Port Orange Police Department official, various local authorities are keeping an eye on the islands. A White House assessment suggests that using sunlight manipulation to combat climate change is possible. According to a report posted on the White House website, the Biden administration is willing to investigate ways to obstruct sunlight to protect the planet from climate change. The White House Office of Science and Technology Policy revealed in the congressionally mandated report that the group has been investigating geoengineering techniques to prevent the sun's beams from exacerbating global warming on Friday. In its page on the topic, the University of Oxford states that geoengineering is the deliberate, large-scale intervention in the Earth's natural systems to counteract climate change. The Biden administration is exploring stratospheric aerosol injection (SI) and marine cloud brightening, according to the study, Congressionally Mandated Report on Solar Radiation Modification. Also included in the study is research on cirrus cloud thinning. According to the report's introduction, research into space-based approaches has not been conducted since geoengineering is simpler to put into practice. The document read, the focus on atmospheric approaches also follows from their greater near-term feasibility relative to space-based approaches. 
This document is still only a research document and does not yet have any associated government policy. It reads, this research plan focuses on improving understanding of the potential impacts of SRM, rather than on technologies needed for deployment. Much of this research would contribute to our ability to understand basic climate processes and effects of human greenhouse gas emissions, as well as outcomes of SRM. The summary continues. A program of research into the scientific and societal implications of solar radiation modification SRM, would enable better informed decisions about the potential risks and benefits of SRM as a component of climate policy. The document did acknowledge that it could pave the way for future government or corporate projects in this field. Such a research program would also help to prepare the United States for possible deployment of SRM by other public or private actors. The report also says, SRM offers the possibility of cooling the planet significantly on a timescale of a few years. In a separate statement, the White House assured readers that, there are no plans underway to establish a comprehensive research program focused on solar radiation modification.